when conducting a two-way MANOVA in SPSS. A two-way multivariate analysis of variance is used when we have two independent variables, both of which contain at least two levels, and two or more dependent variables measured at the scale level of measurement. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view, I have 120 participants. I have one independent variable named program that has three levels, individual counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual, and a, another independent variable named gender that has two levels, male and female. I also have two dependent variables, both measured at the scale level measurement, functioning, and motivation. We're going to presume the data for functioning and motivation are loaded as t-scores. A t-score is a standard score that has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. We'll also presume that all the observations here are independent. A MANOVA gives us information about the effect of each level of an independent variable on a linear combination of the dependent variables. So from the output using these data, we will be able to tell if there's a statistically significant difference between individual, group, and treatment as usual, those three levels, as well as male and female, on a linear combination of functioning and motivation. MANOVA will also tell us about the combination of the two independent variables and the effect on the linear combination. So the interaction between program and gender on the linear combination of functioning and motivation. So the effect of program alone, or gender alone, is called a main effect. And the effect of program times gender is called an interaction effect. I have no missing values in this data set. And I also have equal numbers of each combinations of the levels of the independent variable. So if you look at the combination of individual and male, you see there are 20. And if you look at any other combination, there are 20 as well. For example, group counseling and female, there are 20 there. Looking at the assumptions for MANOVA, first we'll talk about sample size. And there are a lot of different theories regarding sample size. Uh, one is that you need 20 measurements for each level of the independent variable. And this data set certainly meets that. Another sets the minimum sample size as the number of levels multiplied by the number of dependent variables. So using either standard, we are in good shape with these data. MANOVA assumes multivariate normality. There is no direct way to test for this in SPSS. So we use a few other tests to provide us information about this assumption. So first we will test for normality for the functioning dependent variable and the motivation dependent variable. And we'll do that using analyze, descriptive statistics, explore. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. So under dependent list, we'll load functioning and motivation. And the only change we'll make here is under plots, uncheck stem and leaf and check off normality plots with tests. Click continue, then OK. And we'll move down to the test or normality. As you can see, we have the Komogorov Smirnov test, otherwise known as the KS test, and the Shapiro Wilk. Normally, I interpret the Shapiro Wilk. In this case, uh, all the results are not statistically significant. So the p-value for the chaos test for functioning and motivation is 
2 and the p-value for Shapiro-Wilk for functioning 0.482 and for motivation 0.571. So all those results are not statistically significant so we would assume normality. So we're going to assume that functioning is normally distributed and motivation is normally distributed. Additionally we're going to go to analyze and go to regression and we're going to use the linear regression function to calculate the Mahalanobis distance. So in this case uh, it doesn't matter what the dependent variable is, I'll use program, but since we're not actually running the regression to find out the contribution of predictor variables to a dependent variable, it really doesn't matter what the dependent variable is. So we'll put functioning and motivation in the independent list box. And then the only change we're going to make here on the right is under save. We're going to check off Mahalanobis. This is going to create a new variable. So I'll click continue then OK. And what we want to look for here is under residual statistics, Mahalanobis distance of particular interest is the maximum value here. It's 13.316. And we know the critical value for Mahalanobis distance when you have two dependent variables is 13.82. So this value, the maximum value, is less than 13.82. So even though we can't test for multivariate normality directly, we're going to assume that we've met that assumption. Next, we want to check for the linear relationship between each pair of the dependent variables across each level of the independent variables. We'll do that using graphs, legacy dialogs, scatter dot, and then matrix scatter. Click define. In this case, the matrix variables will be functioning and motivation and in rows we'll put the independent variables program and gender and we'll click OK and in these scatter plots what we're looking for is an elliptical shape starting in the bottom left and moving to the top right and we do seem to have that in most of these scatter plots. Although it's a bit questionable in a few of these cases, generally it appears we've met the assumption. So we'll move forward and test for multicollinearity. So to do that, we're going to go to Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate, and we're going to leave everything set to default. We're just going to load functioning and motivation into variables and click OK. So the correlation between the two dependent variables is 0.429. As long as it's less than 0.9, we would assume that these variables are not multicollinear. But we also want to make sure that they are related at a correlation of greater than 0.2. So in this case at 0.429 we meet both of those assumptions. They are related but they are not multicollinear. At this point we're ready to conduct the MANOVA itself and just to clear this data view up a bit I'm going to delete the Mahalanobis distance variable and we're going to go to Analyze and General Linear Model and Multivariate. This is what it looks like by default. Under Fixed Factors, I'm going to load Program and Gender and Dependent Variables, Functioning and Motivation. No changes under Model or Contrast. Under Plots, I'm going to plot Program on the horizontal axis and gender on a separate line and add that. Under post hoc, uh, gender only has two levels so there's no way to run a post hoc test for that, there's no need. But program has three levels 
so I do want to run a post hoc test for program. And since we have equal cases for each level, I'm going to use uh, two key. If we had unequal number of cases for each level of the program independent variable, I would select Chefe. So cl click continue there. Under save, there's no changes, but under options, we do want to make a few changes to the default. I will add display means for program and for gender and for program times gender. And then under display, we'll add descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. Click continue. So now we're configured to run the MANOVA. And taking a look at the results, you can see we have 40 participants in each of the levels of program and 60 from each gender. Moving down to descriptive statistics, we can see the means for functioning motivation for each combination of the levels of the independent variables. And it's notable here that the, the low score, the low mean you have here for individual and female at 42.4. That's a bit lower than the other scores and down here for individual female for motivation, it's also a little lower, 45.45. Now moving down to Box's test of equality of covariance matrices, we can see the p-value here is 0.103. Now the alpha that we use for Box's test is 0.001. Uh, not 0 0.05. Uh, either way, of course, this is a non-significant result. But it's important to recognize that the alpha we're using is 0 0.001. So in this case, since we do not have a statistically significant result, we fail to reject the null, and we'll assume that the covariance matrices of the dependent variables are equal across groups. Moving down to multivariate tests, we did not violate any of the assumptions for MANOVA, so we're going to interpret Wilkes Lambda. If we had violations of assumptions, we would interpret Play's Trace. So looking at program and Wilkes Lambda, we can see the p-value is 0 0.026, so it, uh, there is a statistically significant value there. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis that the combination of function and motivation is equal for all levels of program. And then we'll take a look at the partial eta squared. And this tells us the percentage of the variance that's explained in the combination of function and motivation by program. And this is fairly small. This is interpreted as 4.8%. So a statistically significant finding a small effect size. Then taking a look at gender, we have a non-significant result, 0.378. So we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case and assume that the scores on the combination of functioning and motivation do not differ by gender. And then we have the interaction of program and gender, and we can see in this case it is statistically significant, and it has a partial eta squared of 0 0.053, or 5.3%. So that's a stronger effect than just program alone. So in this case, the interaction effect of program and gender is stronger than just program. Moving down through the output, Next, we have Levine's test of equality of error variances. And what we're looking for here is that we have a non-significant result for function and motivation, and we do have that. Then looking at the test of between subjects effects, we're looking for significant findings here. So if we look at program and functioning and motivation, you can see now it's separate. So it's not the combination of the two any longer. Uh, it's program as it relates to functioning and program as it relates to motivation. 
and we can see here that we have a statistically significant result on the functioning. So the functioning levels are different on the program independent variable, or we would assume they are, at that at that's, uh, p-value, right? 0 0.005 is lower than 0 0.05. But for motivation, we do not have a statistically significant finding. 0.16 is greater than 0 0.05. So we would say that motivation does not differ based on program. And for gender, of course, now we normally wouldn't interpret this because uh, with the multivariate test, we saw we did not have a statistically significant result. But it's non-significant either way, which, of course, is not a surprise. But program times gender, looking at just functioning, we do have a statistically significant finding there. And we have a statistically significant finding for program times gender for motivation. So if we look at this in terms of effect size, for program and functioning, the effect size was 8.8%. For program times gender, it's only 7.1%. For program and motivation, we did not have a statistically significant finding. But we did for program times gender on motivation, and the effect size was 7%. So then continue to move down through the output. SPSS provides us the confidence intervals for program gender and program times gender. And then we have the post hoc test for program. And as you can see here, the only statistically significant p-value was for the individual level and the treatment as usual level. So they were statistically significantly different. But the other combinations, like individual and group, and group and treatment as usual, the other two combinations, we do not have a statistically significant difference between those. And of course, this is just for functioning. If we look down at motivation, there are no statistically significant findings. Moving down the output, taking a look at the profile plots for functioning and motivation. Take a look at functioning first. We see we have female represented by the green line and male by the blue line. And this graphical output is really helpful to understand these relationships because you can see across all three levels of program, the scores for the males didn't really change that much. But they did for the females. The females had a much lower score at the individual uh, level and a low, lower score at the group level than at the treatment as usual. And then looking at motivation, we can see it's a similar result but it's not indicative as as much change as we saw on the function variable. And what's important to keep in mind when looking at these graphs is the y-axis, uh, the high and low values. You can see 54, and this is 44 here. If we look at the functioning graph, we can see it's 55 at the top and 42.5 here. So it's important to keep the uh, values in mind in terms of the y-axis as you interpret these plots. I hope you found this video on conducting a two-way MANOVA and SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.